and welcome to IUP's virtual commencement ceremony. I am Michael Driscoll, president of IUP. Please stand now for our national anthem performed by the IUP alumni virtual band directed and produced by IUP associate professor of music, Timothy Paul. Please be seated. Thank you, Dr. Paul and members of the IUP alumni virtual band. Class of 2020, we will not allow your success to go unnoticed. This is the first celebration with you, but please know that it will not be the last. We are planning to provide your moment in the spotlight with an audience filled with cheering friends and family. For now, I hope you are all celebrating safely at home, surrounded by those you love. One positive aspect of this virtual platform is that it allows IUP family from all over the world to join us. We welcome you and thank you for joining us today. We are honored to have with us a member of the IUP Council of Trustees, Mr. Tim Saika. Thank you for all you do to support and advance IUP. I would like to introduce and offer our appreciation to our Grand Marshal, Dr. John Pagnucci, who led the processional. Thank you, Dr. Pagnucci. Later in the program, you will hear remarks from the others seated on stage. It is now my honor to introduce Sam Smith, Chair of the IUP Council of Trustees and Vice Chair of the State System of Higher Education Board of Governors. Thank you, Dr. Driscoll. Thank you to your staff and all the IUP employees that are working so hard to make this virtual graduation ceremony a special and rewarding day. To our honored guests, our 2020 graduates, know this, you are special. Speaking on behalf of the IUP Council of Trustees and the Board of Governors of the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education, I hope that you will accept our heartfelt congratulations. We want to congratulate you on meeting the challenges of this past year. The IUP family is very proud of you. We want to congratulate you on coping with the changes that have been foisted upon you. 
the IUP is proud of you about that too. And we want to we want to congratulate you on overcoming the disappointments, some lingering to this very day. You are special. And I say that because you persevered. You persevered in meeting those challenges, and you persevered in coping with the changes, and you persevered with dealing with disappointment. Those skills and characteristics that came out of you in dealing with this past year, actually, they probably should have been worth an extra two or three college credits. Not officially, but they will enhance and complement the degree or the degrees that you're being awarded today. They will enhance those degrees when you leave IUP, and they will complement those degrees as you deal with whatever life brings your way. Students are the most important people at IUP, and you are special. Oh, the Council of Trustees and the Board of Governors would like to convey one other congratulations. Congratulations on graduating today. Thank you, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Brittany Hull, who has earned a Doctor of Philosophy degree in Composition and Applied Linguistics, will provide remarks on behalf of graduate students. From Chester, Pennsylvania, Dr. Hall received several awards during her time at IUP, including two graduate student fellowships, the People's Choice for Teaching and Writing, the Scholars for the Dream Award, and the Chair's Memorial Scholarship. Please welcome Brittany Hull. Hey y'all, to President Michael A. Driscoll, Dr. Yaw Asamoa, Dean of the Humanities and Social Sciences, Dr. John Pagnucci, Chair of the English Department, Dr. Gloria Park, Director of the Composition and Applied Linguistics Program, my wonderful advisor, Dr. Matthew A. Vetter, and my mentor who could not be here today, Dr. Elaine B. Richardson of The Ohio State University. I thank you for nominating me and I'm honored to be the 2020 graduate commencement speaker. To the graduating class of 2020, I am humbled to stand before y'all. However, I'd be lying if I didn't tell y'all that I'm shocked to be given this speech and receiving my doctoral degree in composition and applied linguistics. If anybody would have told me five years ago that I would be here at this very moment, I would have told you, you was out of your mind. In this moment, the one word that comes to mind is community. Community has multiple definitions. However, the community I speak of today is defined as a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. See, when I came to IUP in 2015, I was determined and nervous about starting and eventually completing my doctorate. I threatened to leave IUP so much that my mama stopped trying to convince me to stay and just listen to what turned out to be venting sessions that were disguised as threats. During my time here at IUP, I have been able to see the development of my community via my various interactions within my program, with my cohort, my professors, and my family and friends back in my hometown of Chester, Pennsylvania. It's without a doubt my community has grown every year that I've been on the journey to complete my degree. I think each member of IUP's 2020 graduating class would agree with me when I say completing an academic program is hard. The time, mental capacity, and money spent completing coursework and then ev ac eventually, excuse me, writing the thesis or dissertation is hard. 
Furthermore, imagine working toward completing your graduate degree during a time when the world seems to be falling apart around you. The 2020 graduate class of IUP ain't have to imagine, as this became our reality on March 16th when the university suspended all in-person business due to the growing cases of coronavirus, aka COVID-19, aka Dorona, which unfortunately still ravages the world and specifically the U.S. This shift from face-to-face -face classes and meetings turned into virtual classes and meetings. In addition to COVID-19, members of IUP's 2020 graduate class were faced with watching uprisings around the country and across the globe as people of all races, ethnicities, and religions demanded an end to racism and police brutality after learning of the deaths of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd. It was during these tumultuous times that my community of not only friends and family, but also professors, research participants, and IUP faculty and staff became a pillar of support as I traveled toward the finish line. The most interesting thing about community is that to some extent, each and every graduate has experienced a community, regardless of size, who supported us within our respective programs. So I want to encourage y'all going forward to emulate the support received from your community throughout the duration of your program and extend it to others whom you see are on a similar journey. Whether we want to accept it or not, we ain't make it to this point alone. In the words of the late, great Toni Morrison, when you get these jobs that you have been so brilliantly trained for, just remember that your real job is that if you are free, you need to free somebody else. Class of 2020, we need to reciprocate the love and support we receive because that is essentially the core of how a community functions. Thank you to each and every community member who saw us through to the completion of our academic journeys here at IUP. Congratulations, y'all. We did it. Thank you, Dr. Hall. Our undergraduate class is large, and under normal circumstances, we would hold two different ceremonies. So in this virtual mode, we have the pleasure of hearing remarks from two speakers. The first is Madison, Madison Hornstein, who has earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Biochemistry from the Kopchik College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics. Please welcome her. I know this is not how any of us expected graduation to look, so I wanted to thank everyone who made it possible to give us this new kind of ceremony today. When we left for spring break six months ago, most of us expected to come back and savor the last few months of college before walking across the stage at graduation to celebrate our hard work. And then, without much warning, the entire world turned upside down and our four years at IUP abruptly came to an end. These last six months have been filled with heartbreak, pain, and tragedy. We are living through some of the darkest times in modern history. However, behind this turmoil lies a unique opportunity to reinvent ourselves. This is a concept that most of us should be pretty familiar with since we just spent the last four years reinventing ourselves. Isn't that what college is all about? 
When I think back to the person I was when I came to IUP, I could never have envisioned the person I've become today. My freshman year hit me like a ton of bricks, much like the pandemic has ensnared our world in chaos. My peers seemed to be connecting all the right dots, while I couldn't even see any dots on the page. Eventually, I stopped looking for the dots, and I just kept moving forward. Along the way, I learned that embracing that kind of uncertainty is hard. It's painful. It's scary. Life is so easy when all you have to do is connect every dot that's already put into place. Except, what happens when one of those dots explodes or becomes infectious or catches on fire? Without a clear path from one dot to the next, how do you move forward? What do you do when the world as you know it is crumbling around you and every dot has disappeared from the page? My time at IUP taught me that the only thing you can do is embrace it. I learned that when you embrace the great unknown, you open yourself up to more possibilities than you ever knew were there. Change and growth become easier when you discard the path that you thought you had to follow. As our world is changing around us, some of us may have to rethink the dots that we set out to connect. But this is a beautiful thing. We are entering the workforce during a period of rapid change and growth. As young people without much life experience, we can offer a perspective that is unfettered by the fear of change. Now is our time to use our newfound skills and knowledge to make an impact on the things that we care about. We can look to our leaders and our mentors for guidance, but we can also leverage our unique experience to shape our future in ways that those before us could not. In the coming months and years, I am confident that the world will continue to change around us, which only makes it more important not to focus so much on connecting the right dots in the right order. Perhaps the most important thing I learned during college is that the greatest growth and wisdom often come from the greatest pain. Of course, starting our lives during these tumultuous times is painful, but we cannot let our pain hamper our potential. We must lean into these strange circumstances which have been thrust upon us. So, I challenge the class of 2020 to focus on what's right in front of us instead of connecting all the dots that we might have envisioned just six months ago. As challenging as it may be, we may have to let go of these dots as we transition into a new era. If we can embrace the beauty buried within the chaos, connections to new dots can emerge from the hazy cloud of uncertainty that has settled upon our world today. The class of 2020 is uniquely positioned to embrace this chaos and help the world set up the foundation for the next era of history. So. Here's to us, the first class of a new era. Congratulations to all my peers for making it here today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hornstein. It is my pleasure to share recorded remarks from Andrew Juntunen. He earned a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Music Education and Performance. Originally from King of Prussia, he now lives and works in Ohio and is enrolled in a master's program. Hello, good morning, or good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're choosing to watch this video. Uh, I hope you're safe, happy, and well. It definitely is a strange time to be a student and even more so to be a graduating senior. This doesn't feel like previous graduation ceremonies that we've had or any of the three commencements that I've seen at IUP and the world sure seems pretty gloomy. But as a close professor of mine would always say, life is short, so don't waste my time. 
So don't waste your time on all of the negative aspects of life, but praise and be grateful for all of the experiences you've had and will continue to have. Most of us might be young and just in our 20s, but think about how fast the last four years have flown by. It feels like last week was my first day on campus for band camp, not knowing anyone in the area, and eventually having that small fall break when all the faculty went on strike. It feels like the chorale tour to Prague and Vienna was only a couple days ago, and marching with the legend at Allentown for the last time seems like it was just yesterday. Not to mention the countless hours we put into studying, practicing, drinking gallons of coffee a day, and all of the hard work that we put into these degrees that we finally have. Life is too short and time flies by too fast to continually focus on all of the troubles that come to you. Yes, this isn't the graduation we all had hoped for, and yeah, we're heading into the real world at an unprecedented and uncertain time. But think about how hard you work to get to where you are now, and think about how you can make the world a better place today and tomorrow. We have hundreds of graduating nurses going to work on the front lines against COVID-19, ROTC officers getting ready to serve our nation here and overseas, business majors, scientists, computer gurus, and many others working from their homes to keep the world moving. And not to mention all of the teachers preparing to teach their first years all online. Find ways to be compassionate and support everyone that you love, and especially those struggling in this time. Or find ways to give back to your community and help those less fortunate than us. Start or continue to be healthy, exercise, socially distance when you can, and please wear a dang mask. Please. Support those fighting the good fight because it's about time that we started building each other up. Thank you and be well. Thank you, Mr. Juntinen. Good morning. Thank you and congratulations to all of the student speakers. I'm Timothy Moreland, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. And it's my privilege to congratulate each of you today who are joining us from all over the United States, and in fact, from all over the world. As President Driscoll said earlier, we look at this as a celebration of your achievements, but it is not the last celebration. I look forward to a time when we can all do this face to face and I can shake your hand and congratulate you in person. Today, you and your families and friends can be proud. I want you to enjoy this accomplishment, but at the same time, I also must remind you that because of your distinction, you have a greater burden to bear. You will be called upon to put your knowledge to use in your chosen field. You will be called upon to help solve the many problems that face our nation and the world. I'm confident that your experiences at IUP have prepared you well for this challenge, and I look forward to hearing of your many accomplishments in the years to come. At this point, it's with mixed emotions that we move to the next part of the ceremony. I usually introduce the conferral of degrees to an arena full of enthusiastic people, full of cheering families and friends. Until we can enjoy that moment together, I hope that you accept this representative event with happiness for the graduates who are here on the stage. To those of you watching from home, please know that we share your desire, we share your anticipation of a celebration with a stadium, with an arena filled with your family and friends. Following the conferral of the two degrees for the students on stage, we will move then to the virtual conferral of degrees. Graduates' photo slides will appear by college in order of degree level and in alphabetical order. Each name will be read as the slide shows on the screen. And at this time, I invite Dr. Hillary Creeley to please come to the podium.
Doctoral degree candidate, Brittany Hull, please rise. President Driscoll, I have the honor to present this candidate for the Doctor of Philosophy degree. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Council of Trustees of Indiana University of Pennsylvania and the Board of Governors of the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education and on recommendation of the faculty and graduate dean and subject to completion of all degree requirements, I confer upon you the doctoral degree with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto as testament of this accomplishment, you will receive a doctoral hood, which signifies your attainment of this advanced degree. Please come forward. Brittany S. Hull, dissertation title, When You Use Your White Voice to Get to Job, Linguistic Identity Negotiation and the Black Woman English Teacher Scholar, chaired by Dr. Matthew Vetter. Congratulations, Dr. Hull. Dean Snavely, please come forward. I am Deanne Snavely, Dean of the Coptic College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics. Ms. Hornstein, please rise. President Driscoll, I have the honor of presenting Madison I. Hornstein for the Bachelor of Science degree. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Council of Trustees of Indiana University of Pennsylvania and the Board of Governors of the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education, and on the recommendation of the faculty and your dean, and subject to the completion of all degree requirements, I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science. You may now move your tassel to the left side. Please come forward to receive your diploma. Congratulations, Ms. Hornstein. President Driscoll. I have the honor to present the candidates for the Doctor of Psychology degree. Thank you, Dean Creeley. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Council of Trustees of Indiana University of Pennsylvania and the Board of Governors of the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education, and on recommendation of the faculty and graduate dean, and subject to completion of all degree requirements, I confer upon you the doctoral degree with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Sofia L. Alvarez, The Impact of Sexual Assault Acknowledgement Status and Shame on Psychological and Academic Outcomes, chaired by Dr. Maureen McHugh. Kurmika Besai, Hindsight Bias in Clinical Violence Risk Assessment, Moderating Factors and Debiasing Techniques, chaired by Dr. Anthony Perillo. Rebecca L. Frazier, The Effects of a Dual-Strain Probiotic Supplement on Attention and Memory in Healthy Subjects, chaired by Dr. David Laporte. President Driscoll, I have the honor to present the recipients of master's degrees for disciplines within Coptic College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics. Thank you. 
by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Council of Trustees of Indiana University of Pennsylvania and the Board of Governors of the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education and on recommendation of the faculty and graduate dean and subject to the completion of all degree requirements, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Education, Master of Science, or Professional Science Masters as earned. Shima Ali Osgul. Sunday Luke Ayurbarmi. Anne Oimoyemi Fagubi. Anwita Sunil Gugi. Julie Ann Johnson. Alexa Parton. Aubrey Lynn Ramos. I am Deanne Snavely, Dean of the Coptic College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics. President Driscoll, I have the honor to present the candidates for bachelor's degrees in the academic disciplines in the Coptic College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics and interdisciplinary programs in academic affairs. Thank you, Dean Snavely. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Council of Trustees of Indiana University of Pennsylvania and the Board of Governors of the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education and on the recommendation of the faculty and your dean and subject to the completion of all degree requirements, I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, or Bachelor of Science in Education as earned. Cher Alazmi, Lindsay Auman, Ashley Andrews, Elizabeth Ansel, Brittany Arner, Brianna Ashcraft, Rebecca Jade Bailey, Braden Bowerman, Dakota Elizabeth Bose. Emily Brewer, Jenna Kariff, Taylor Carey, Jamie Cotter, Lyndon Darwin Shelton, Christina Rose Dolan, Carly Ebert, Alexis Edge, Griffin Epps, Blaze Robert Erzar, Brianna Faber, Olajubu Falaranmi, Destiny Foote, Amelia Fouts, Chloe Fry, Juliana Gabarek, Kelly Galani, Malia Morgan Grabiak, Alexis Griggs, Madeline Hammond, Melissa Horak, Jitao Wang, Ben Hudak, Rocio James Cruz, Lauren Nicole Kambik. Kayla Kimak, Kara Ann Kosnowski, Jeffrey Larkin, Brandon Lawson, Alicia Lazur, Ali Letso, Elizabeth Loboff, Olivia Maloney, Sophie Mangus, Victoria Mazars, Anne Elizabeth Michaels, Saksham Moan, Gernella Pei, Daphne Pratt, Cody Pytash, Cody Rathke, 
Marjani Reed, Yvonne Page Robinson, Elena Schwartz, Jasmine Shields, Melanie Singh, Courtney Smith, Kevin Sofera, Elizabeth Sullivan, Alexis Talton, Alexis Tang, Nicole Theory, Madison Thompson, Jordan Turner, Taylor Valenti, Mariana Alexandra Valenzuela Sanchez, Vita Van Housen McMillan, Sophia Walden, Emily Walker, Ian Williams. Congratulations to all IUP May and August graduates. Great job. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Dennis Faulkner, Chairperson for the Department of Military Science. President Driscoll, it's my honor to present our cadets for military commission today. Lieutenant Colonel Faulkner, as the cadets have completed all of the requirements for a military commission and have received their baccalaureate degrees, you are hereby authorized to administer the oath of office. Repeat after me. I, Cole Crumpler, I, Cole Crumpler, having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States, having been appointed officer of the Army of the United States, in the rank of second lieutenant, in the rank of second lieutenant, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support and defend, that I will support and defend, the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, against all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, that I bear true faith, I will bear true faith, and allegiance to the same, and allegiance to the same, same, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without mental reservation, without mental reservation, for purpose of evasion, for purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge, and I will well and faithfully discharge, discharge the duties, discharge the duties, of the office, of the office, upon which I'm about to enter, upon which I'm about to enter, so help me God, so help me God. On behalf of the university community, I offer congratulations on the commissioning of our new officers of the United States Army. Congratulations, lieutenants. These are difficult times in our world, and I want to take a moment to express gratitude to everyone who has served or who is actively serving in our military. Thank you also, all who serve the community as firefighters, first responders, and medical personnel, and especially over the last several months. Thank you to all healthcare professionals working to battle coronavirus. Thank you all for your service. I would like to offer congratulations to our University Senate Distinguished Faculty and Staff Award recipients, our new Professors Emeriti, Dean Emeritus, and recipients of all past and present Distinguished University Professor Awards. Congratulations. <laughs> the biographical information for all of those people is located in your program. I'd also like to commend all faculty members for their simply remarkable work. Of course, no one predicted that the pandemic would place the university in the position of having to move quickly to a remote mode of teaching, a remote mode of learning, 
in a remote mode of everything. Last March, our faculty rallied and pushed to convert classes for remote education, and many participated in our summer academy to improve on what they learned at that time. I thank them all. It's my pleasure to introduce a video of Melissa Craig, who presented the senior class gift. She graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in management from Eberly College of Business and Information Technology. This year was not how any of us anticipated finishing our IEP journey, but we persevered and finished strong. On behalf of the senior class, I am pleased to announce that, despite the unexpected, the May and August 2020 class was part of a record-breaking year of student giving participation, more than a thousand student donors. Our class chose to leave their mark on IEP by making a gift to an area on campus that we are most passionate about. The class of 2020 is committed to promoting the student experience for those who will follow in our footsteps. We know that by investing in the areas of IEP that matter most to us, that we are providing future IEP students with the resources that they need to do their best work at IEP and imagine the unlimited possibilities for their futures. Graduates who contributed to the senior class gift received crimson and gray philanthropy cords. These philanthropy cords represents our desire to leave a legacy to our alma mater. On behalf of the university, I thank the members of the class of 2020 for this worthy investment. I am pleased to introduce Mr. John Simpson, president of the IUP Alumni Association Board of Directors, who joins us to welcome our new graduates into the association. John? I welcome each and every one of our new graduates as members of the IUP Alumni Association. You share this wonderful university with more than 150,000 alumni who crossed the stage before you. You have been and will always be a member of the IUP community, but today your membership status has changed. Continue to be proud. Among our alumni are prominent journalists and policymakers, college presidents, CEOs of large corporations, owners of small businesses, inventors, scientists, educators, award-winning artists and musicians, clergy, army generals, and experts who care for the health and well-being of people, families, and communities. IUP alumni are known for taking what they have experienced here and making it a better world. This university is yours. Without my degree and experience at IUP, I would have never landed my dream job as a marketing manager with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Never give up. Always keep pursuing your passions and your dreams. As you embark on your life's next journey, please always remember that your relationship with IUP is symbiotic. You needed the university, and it needs you. Always remember where you came from, and then you can always come home again. Congratulations to you all. Thank you, Mr. Simpson. On behalf of the IUP family, I would like to express our deepest appreciation to parents, families, and friends who helped to support these graduates and especially through the difficult changes in their spring semester. I also want to express my appreciation for your patience as we've had to create alternative ways to honor your graduates. Now, Please rise for the alma mater, presented by vocalist Gino Perillo, a member of the class of 2020 who is now enrolled in master's program at IUP. Mr. Perillo is accompanied on the piano by Dr. Henry Wong Do, a professor of piano in the music department.
Today, we were honoring the hard work of all our May and August 2020 graduates. Please see the program book for a full list of graduates.